Good, no questions, we know this guy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> The mic's not on you. Go ahead. Okay. You talk. I learned so swell on your leadership, Conrad Nelson, to where you did now. You just sound just like Nelson Curry. I say, when we think alike, we just don't walk alike. But we fight for the same cause. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nelson, when you um, said that uh, the need is not for organizers, it's for teachers now, can you say more about that? Like how does, because we are moving outward, I'm an activist in my union and in the public education movement, what do you mean by teaching? Can you say more about um, the difference between organizing and teaching? I, I don't want to uh, make these into categories because in society you can't teach if you don't participate, right? right. So, but who's going to answer or listen to somebody who's simply on the outside? That's but right. there is a, a current in the, in the revolutionary movement that believes simply in fighting back. And they don't have any, they don't have any goal, any That's future, right. Right? right? But the world's in motion. And, and I think that the role of the real revolutionary is to explain what the problem is and what the solutions are, not simply to, to mobilize, you know, for another demonstration. The mobilizing for the demonstrations is absolutely necessary. And I'm not saying that, that's what we talked about in the report we talked about, the biggest thing, that the biggest challenge we face today is the outward motion of the league. We have been consolidating for so long that sometimes we forget the, the importance of that consolidation being the foundation for organizational activity. But the organizational activity means absolutely nothing today unless you come up with a solution to the problem. Yes, that's right. And Answer. nobody cares much in that solution. Right. That's why it's so important that we get our propaganda out. Because the, the, the thing that we raised in the, uh, in the report is that we're faced with this thing is that there's a rebellion growing in America. And they can only be resolved by communism, but the people who are doing the rebellion are anti-communists. Yeah. 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 So we're going to have to, we have a tremendous propaganda task on our hands. Now how are we going to do this? Only by the most widespread, militant, uh, clear, you know, answering to questions that, that, that unless we overcome this aspect of it, we're not, we can't win this fight. Because in the final analysis, what happens in history is an intellectual question. You don't have to choose. So we have, on the one hand, we have a, a, one section of our organization that is really in the vanguard, so to speak, of the social struggle. But the, but the intellectual uh, uh, attitude, you know, in America is such they don't dare raise the solution under the conditions right. that they're that they're developing, right? On the other hand, we have people who are giving solutions that uh, don't have any foundation in the mass struggle. So we have to overcome this. I mean, this is not something that we that we ask for. It's something that naturally evolved the way that the American struggle evolved, right? With the with the tremendous anti communism. Yes. I. Uh, uh, <coughs> Got a letter from me or email from some young person in uh, Los Angeles, a couple of, about a week ago, and uh, asked if we were a communist organization. <laughs> and so I, first thing I wrote back and said, "Well, I think the first thing we got to do is go to the dictionary, <laughs> and uh, we we'll, <laughs> we'll look up this word communism, and then we'll be able to, to, to discuss it." But if somebody, if I'm talking to somebody, and they think communism is a political system, and I think communism is an economic system, of course we can't connect. And so the American, you ask the African American what communism is, it's a political dictatorship. Yeah, right. right, right. It doesn't have anything to do with democracy or dictatorship or anything else. It's, it's, it's the way, it's a, re, a question of productive relations, right? I mean, how do people stand in relation to one another as far as the productive process is concerned? 
So we have a tremendous job. And so we have to become an, organ, an organization of, 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 of propagandists. We have to use every propaganda tool on our, on our, on our disposal. And we've got to break up this idea of eager or. Mm -hmm. All of them. Everything. Everything. And, and we've got to somehow or another bridge this gap between the, the uh, commerce who are deeply involved in activity and because of it, we've got to be extremely careful how to present answers. And on the other hand, the people who have the answers but don't have the base in the school construction. We've got a lot of animals. Yes. Yes. Hello. Huh? Are you done Oh, no. I am still in the scratching their head. What should we do? And then the second thing, a lot of us don't really have a clear understanding of this fascism and what does it mean. When we think about fascism, you think about a Channel 50 movie with a light bulb in a room and a chair. It doesn't mean that. So perhaps you can talk a little bit about this sweep of, of destroying democratic rights across the nation and why this, you know, just isolated responses to that and then say something about this fascist stuff and we are marching in the battle. Sing it! Next time. <laughs> I look like this guy that's dressing the right camera. You know, we're living in a very, very special period of history where uh, when I was a young revolutionary they back in the 30s, uh, you could choose to become a communist or you chose to become a fascist. And then you fought for what you believed in. But the daily development of communism is objective, right? It's because, of, it's because these corporations are so huge that they can no longer serve the interests of society in private hands. They have to become public property. Well, the same way with the rise of fascism, I, I, you know, we take the development of Hitler or Franco or any of these dogs, that they chose fascism as a way to solve a social problem. But the day fascism is arising just as objectively as communism is, there is no way for the capitalist class to hold on to their property and the consolidation of their property without undercutting the democratic rights of the people. Now, now I'm not the only one who's saying this. I was reading in, uh, 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 some remarks by Senator Vicinic, you know, from, uh, from uh, Ohio, or not Senator, but Representative. And, and he said that we are, but in order to solve the problem, we're going to have to have some economic democracy in this country. I said, wow, that's, that's pretty great. I remember when uh, I lived in Cleveland, <laughs> when the city's first was elected to the city council. He was uh, 21 years old when he was elected to the city council. And they immediately named him Dennis the Menace. <laughs> because he, he started raising the question of democracy, right? And so, so how are you going to make, how are you going to have democracy in the economy if the people don't own the democracy, the, the economy? The reason that America was a democratic country while it had slavery is the fact that it was widespread private ownership of farms, right? All you had to do was kill some Indians, take their land, and you, know, you became part of the establishment. So you can't have a democracy unless you have ownership of the property. And so, so, so we're seeing then that on the one hand, this objective process towards socializing these giant corporations, and on the other hand, we see them digging in, defending themselves. 
but they can't defend themselves except by taking away your rights. So the, uh, the rise of fascism today is just as objective as the rise of communism. It has to be fought out. So. But first of all, I think we've got to make people understand that uh, fascism isn't just a thing. Oh, <laughs> I get another one that's straight out. I came from a family of 11 people who argued all the time. And if you didn't learn to talk fast, you were not <laughs> 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 okay. so, so anyway, though, the point I want to make is a simple one, is that, that the objective process is in front of our eyes, but we've got to make people look at it. And we've got to make people understand what that process actually, actually is. Because I'm telling you, Tommy, that uh, I mean, I go to bed every night. I thank the good Lord for one more day because we are in serious trouble. Yeah. When, 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 I, I talked to Pastor Thomas about you know, the fight all year. I remember uh, when Tito took over in, uh, in Yugoslavia and he had this gang of warring tribes, right? I mean, people who've been killing each other for centuries. And uh, somehow or another, Tito pulled the Serbs and the Croats and the this and the that, he pulled them together. And I remember when they passed the law in Yugoslavia that if you marry someone outside of your own ethnic group, the government gave you a house. <laughs> and and they, were, they were beginning to, just, to overcome these ethnic divisions. Then came the counter revolution, right? Yes. And by the time they start killing each other all over again. You look at the Jews in Germany. They were pretty well integrated. I remember, I remember an old Jewish guy who came from Germany said, well, we're not going to get it the same way the Poles are getting it, because we're more German. That uh, the, the Yiddish language, which is mainly spoken by the German Jews, is very close to the German language. And it's not going to happen to us. They killed all of them. They have the day they've developed. They've developed viruses the day that will kill every African American in this country and not touch a white person. I mean, don't for a minute think that you're safe. And that's what we're just for African Americans. That goes for Latin Americans and for Native Americans. And they've got, they got viruses that can kill every select group in the world. And these people are not playing. And we have a terribly dangerous situation over here. But first of all, you cannot solve a problem that you cannot describe. And our purpose, first of all, let's get into the problem. Then we can find some way to go about developing a rational resolution. But I'm scared to death. And you should be too. Of course, you didn't fight World War II. But when you get you do were an infantry soldier in World War II and saw the whole <laughs> horrible, uh, I don't know what you call it, animal behavior that human beings can be reduced to in two minutes after the first shot is fired, that veneer of civilization disappears. Come this Terrible animal. And it happens. It's going to happen again. And we have all the elements here in America, right? The slavery, the genocide, the, the ethnic hatreds, and so forth. So we're in a lot of trouble. But what do we have on our side? The objective process. We have that. And we're going to win in the final analysis. We have to get our act together.